All right, welcome. So this is uh, Lock Picking Hollywood for SaintCon. And uh, this is just gonna be kind of like a little fun panel discussion where we watch some lock picking videos and talk about it. So I will introduce who we are. So I'm Didymus. Um, I've been doing SaintCon for a couple of years now, helping run the Lockpick Village in Los Santos. And with me, we've got Medler, Corncob, and Jimmy Longs. So uh, yeah, let's just go start at the top there and give a little intro about yourself and uh, your favorite lock pick and yeah. All right, hey guys, I'm Medler. Um, I've been picking locks for, oh, well, since towards the beginning of the pandemic, it was a pandemic hobby for me and it's, it's grown into uh, probably a lifelong obsession. Um, Probably my favorite lock to pick, just kind of leisurely, something that I find fun to pick is an American 1100. I, I love picking those. They're fun to just play around with. Um, and yeah, that's me. All right, I guess I'm next up. Uh, Corn Cob here. Um, I guess I've been picking for on and off for a good chunk of chunk of my life let's see probably 15 or so years now but i really got more serious about it during the pandemic and started actually trying to progress through some more difficult locks um i'd say my favorite locks to pick right now would be probably working through medicos just because i like the the dual locking mechanisms on those but trying to work my way through some harder things you have way more patience than I do. <laughs> I like them. I'm right now. I'm working on a an Asus 600 with the gin spools, and that's that is testing my patience. <laughs> yeah. But I know Jimmy can pick those. The, the Asus 600. <laughs> they they take me 45 a minute or like a, an hour. I, they take quite a bit. Those gin spools and the the counter milling, but. Uh, once you get so far in them and they start giving pretty good feedback, they're 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 pretty fun. And any lock that gives me good feedback uh, is pretty fun. They get pretty frustrating when you you don't get much. So even like a Master 570 is fun. The 1100 series American locks are fun. Um, yeah. But by the way, I'm Jimmy Long's. Uh, I like locks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's us. Oh, and my favorite pick. Um, so I know we don't want to talk politics, but I actually do like the DeForest Half Diamond. Some people here might say, no, that's not a hook. You're a jerk. But I, I like to stir things up. So that's my I favorite. You like pick. lock picks. You just don't like to pick locks. <laughs> there you go. He just collects picks. I mean, he never puts them into locks. It's just <laughs> Well, the, how else do they stay pristine and not get all scratched up? <laughs> Crap, you buy two of each and you use one for picking and one for display. That's a good idea. All right. <laughs> that is a bit of a religious word. I don't even know how Middler and Corncob feel about deforest diamonds. Yeah. I use Never a standard hook like 90% of the time. Yeah. Got, gotta love the standard hook. It's it's my all to in, in 18,000s, preferably. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I don't have any in 18,000, so I've got 15 or uh, 20, but yeah. Yeah, same here. we got to get you guys to 18,000. So it's like that special magic spot. Peterson picks are so expensive, though. Make one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If you haven't seen my garage. It's not, it's not as cool as yours, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is going to be a fun panel. I can tell already. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, let me talk a little bit about why, why we kind of decided to go this direction. And it's all because of COVID, because COVID sucks. But let's see. So yeah, COVID ru ruins everything. Had a, I think it was Zodiac reached out and said, hey, we still want to do a lock of a community. Awesome. What did you have in mind? It's like, that's why I'm calling you, dummy. W what do you want to do? It's like, we're... <laughs> we're doing virtual. I don't know what we're going to do. Like, I still got the lockpick village thing in my garage. Like, I don't know what we want to do and like not get anyone sick or anything like that. So 
started thinking of a few things, came across this website here, the Museum of Lockpicking. Have any of you heard of this? Yep. I have not. But down in San Jose or what? No, I actually haven't. No, this, is, this isn't like an actual museum. So here's a video of it and I'm probably gonna mute it. But someone took lock picking from all the different video games and basically built, built a website where you can walk around and just get frustrated doing video game lock picking. But, but does it have Skyrim? Yes, <laughs> it has all of them. All Skyrim and, and I mean, Splinter Cell, does it have Splinter Cell? I think it oh. does. I think Ooh. Splinter Cell is like an actually pretty close if yeah, I so recall, I, I came across this and thought, this is perfect. We'll just tweet this out and say, here's the LPC, and I don't have to do anything, and I can be lazy. <laughs> and it's just like the real thing. I mean, just like, exactly. yep. just like. And screwdrivers. I can't remember the, uh, I can vaguely remember the, the lock picking on Splinter Cell. I want to say that was like one of the better. Remakes. Yeah, it, I think it is one of, you actually have to lift pins to a shear line. Yeah. So, yeah, I know Skyrim was just like, poking around and breaking the pick on like every third try or something like that. All, all out, you kind of had to adjust the tension or where it was a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fallout was setting the Fallout's angle. And then, yeah. Oh, there's an actual. Yeah. Look at Oblivion Indian. go. There's uh, Oblivion where you just like bounce them a bunch. Single you bounce them and you had, to, you had to click when they're right at the top. Well, that was a lever lock too. That wasn't even pin and tumbler. Yeah. So I think this was an earlier one because I believe Splinter if you go to the right website, oh. yeah, I believe if you go to the website, they've added those now. Okay. Um, this is just a video that I grabbed because I didn't want to go to the actual website while we're recording and like have demo fail. What is this garbage? I don't even know what that. But, no. uh, All right. What on earth? Like, what? Are you guessing like the number common? Yeah. What I. So. I'm guessing this would have been a major hit just on the responses like, that's stupid. <laughs> this is the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> no, I think it's kind of fun still. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Lock picking and D is it just roll a D20? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Six yeah, steps. I don't even know. So anyway, that was the first idea. And I was like, no, we just want to do something kind of interactive or whatever. So I was like, okay. So I started scouring the internet and mm. Iron Geek posted this and I was like, dude, that is awesome. So he, he 3D printed it. I think it kind of looks like a miniature Atari, like a little handheld Atari thing with an Arduino inside. And, and basically what it is, is it's, uh, you got your wafer lock on the left and in the middle you have a small like filing cabinet pin tumbler. And then you have a tubular lock on the right side. And then on the back end, he's got little contact points. So you can actually like hit the button. It starts the stopwatch. And then once all three are open, it stops it. So I thought, that would be cool. Like just send the parts or whatever. And then whoever wants to go to the St. Con store and like buy it, they can like assemble it themselves. And that's actually really cool. That's way cool. I know. Right. So I reached out to him. I was like, um, slacking. I, uh, I can't remember how I contacted him. But I was like, Hey, it's me again. What's up? How do you do this? Like, dude, that was such a nightmare to make that prototype. It was a piece. Like <laughs> he said, it was very, very difficult. It's like building something cool. like that, that you could just put three kick cylinders into would be awesome that yeah well, b, b sites san, san francisco actually does something similar to it but they have a, a padlock a door lock and a, a a car lock and your whole idea was to, was to represent like escaping the gel getting out the door and then taking the car uh, but they even went a step further and uh, like they had different levels there was an easy like there's an easy version of each lock, a medium and a hard. And uh, yeah, it was actually pretty cool. So, and you were actually ranked on your score. I'm sure there are things out on the internet about it, but. Was it like all contained like in a little case, like something, or was it like three separate things that. Uh, it was pretty big, it took up a whole table and only one okay. person could run through it each time. Okay. But, gotcha. So it was but... more like a lock pick village, like prop that you would set up and have people sign up and go through. Yeah, it was super fun. The, the Cisco guys funded it. And one of my buddies, I forgot his name. Just, dang it. Hope he doesn't watch this, but he he, he put it together. St. Con 2021. We have an idea. 
Well, I, I like the idea of like it. Well, especially nowadays with like all the different types of locks people are getting into, and uh, like having the different types of locks that you have to get to and be familiar with. I, I, I really like that they have like the tubular lock there too. And yeah, the tubular lock is a nice curveball there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can do it with regular picks, but it's it's, kind of, it's not fun. You, you know, you get your mantis, and then you're like, oh, I shifted it one one shift, and now they all reset again. It's like ah. You might get lucky with one of the impressioning tubular picks. One but, down, yeah. six or seven to go. Yeah. That, that yeah. middle one almost looks like a USPS mail lock, but it's yeah. not random at all, so maybe not. He does have a couple videos on his site where he goes through each one kind of explaining it, but man, I, I thought that would be so cool if we could do this, but it just didn't seem like... Um, it was ready to like, here, here are the plans. Here's the GitHub. Here's how you do it. It's like still a work in progress, but I think right. this would be a fun little thing. Uh, it'd be fun. We should put something like that together. All right. So the next idea I had was still someone's idea. So first of all, tools are awesome. I don't know if anyone knows anything about tool here. Maybe Jimmy Longs does, but. Yeah, those are my buddies. I know those guys. Yeah. So what is tool? Like that subtle put you on the spot. <laughs> Tool is the shoot. What does it stand for? The uh, Open Organization of Lockpickers, and uh, there's an organization in the UK. There's one in the US, and you're looking at Deviant, Babic, Night Owl, and Max um, up there in that picture. Babic was one of the old board members. I'm actually one of the board members now with Deviant, Night Owl, and Max, and uh, basically they're they're their goal is to teach people about the security and uh, about locks. And that's what they do. It's an open, uh, what's it called, a nonprofit organization in the US. Uh, they, they provide tools and the, there's a lot of different organizations and, and count or in cities all over the US. Uh, we do have one in, in Salt Lake, Utah, Meddler and Corncov and me. We've been meeting about every month. Um, uh, which uh, we've been having a ball. It's been pretty good. Minus the last one was pretty quiet. We, it was Corn Cobb and I hanging out. <laughs> best but, meeting ever. Best meeting ever. It was like, what's your birthday? <laughs> You're saying that because I wasn't there. I see, I see. Yeah. Right. We, we miss Meddler. <laughs> yeah, but this next one, it should be a good time. In fact, I'm hoping to get night out, out there. The guy in the, the sunglasses down there. But yeah, that's what Tool is. Nice. Yeah, thanks for doing that little plug. And um, yeah, so this is a video that basically we're just copying more or less. We're, so uh, Deviant set this up. It's on his YouTube channel. Check it out. And they basically watch different clips of um, people using lock picks or other methods in Hollywood and media and stuff like that. So um, I took a couple of those. And luckily, this YouTube channel, Blent Locks, he had a playlist with a whole bunch of them. So I grabbed a few from there. So credit where credit is due. And then I also threw in a few newer ones because um, the previous, the one that Dave posted was like four years old. And I wanted to throw in a few newer clips or whatever. So um, I was thinking we'd do that, kind of do the same thing. So we'll, we'll watch the clip and hopefully it's not too jumpy on the recording. And uh, then we'll just discuss or laugh or call BS or just see how it goes. Sounds good. And then you're going to edit all the stupid stuff we say, right? Uh, no, no edits. I don't know how to edit. What? Yes, I can edit if you want. I was going to say, I'll have to keep my mouth shut then. <laughs> all right. Video ends up being two minutes long. Man, that was a short video. <laughs> okay. So I might have to skip a little bit because you know how when you share YouTube videos, you can do the and timestamp. When you embed that into a Google Slides, it, it removes the timestamp. So I might have to fast forward a little bit. So here's our first one from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Hello, -Nine. this? this. I will bet you that by midnight, it was a disastrous failure. Yes. But it gave me the idea for Herman, the friendly janitor you met. With Herman, I commenced the perfect crime. I caught you as Herman. But you didn't catch Rosa. Come out of there. As it turns out, our friend Rosa is great at picking locks. She did not surprise me. No. It's going to be like a simple way for the lock pretty much. Of your office it looked seat. like she was legit. So I, I like that there was say, actually a tension wrench there. They actually yeah. used two tools. Yeah, the, the two tools 
And one of them actually being a tension wrench, not just sticking two picks into a lock. <laughs> and honestly, with like a crappy wafer lock that's on most desks or, or filing cabinets, you can actually open them that quick. So it's completely realistic. She used both tools. Yeah. Both I, correct tools. Yeah. Yeah. It looks, I can't tell if the, it looks like she's using a rake. Like, yeah. I mean, that is borderline realistic right there that could that could that could yeah. happen <laughs> Hold on. Already, is that after she opened it or is that where she started she's turning it right now yeah it's turning yeah i so wonder if it was already picked just slightly and then they, she put it in they're like okay roll camera and then twisted it the rest of the way or if she actually legit did it i don't know but either i mean if she's using a rake and it's a terrible lock you you can pick them pretty quick <laughs> yeah yeah, you can see her inserting it and then turning. So, yeah, the safe would have been more interesting to get into. <laughs> so they actually talk about that later in later in the clip here. I think don't they get the code? And I got it. You were so concerned with getting your keys back, you didn't even notice the sergeant steal your phone. That's right. Even the sergeant's on my side. I then had Charles dust your screen cover for prints. The greasiest smudges revealed the four numbers you use the most. <laughs> the four numbers in your passcode. Based on your advanced age, I assume that you use the same passcode for everything. Your phone, your email, and of course... <laughs> no one does that. Fair, <laughs> fair assumption. And as you walked over here, Charles awkwardly stuffed himself through your window and opened your safe. We had the four numbers of your code, which meant there were 24 possible combinations for Charles to try. That could take up to four minutes, which is why I really dragged out this explanation. I mean, your math is pretty good here, but the most thing is most locks like that have what lock out. Talking about? This is an open yeah, it's like after X amount of failed attempts. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see the model of the safe. I didn't do any like research to see what the exact model was, but you know. Most of those cheap safes have a cheap backup lock that you can get past pretty quick. But if it's a, if it has any sort of nicer lock on it, then you're looking at like electronics and like side channel attacks and different things like that, which is actually getting pretty popular lately. Yeah, it's kind of fun. That's awesome. All right, next video. Let's check this one out. The Inside Man. I love heist movies. Who's all seen this? That's a good. One. It's a good one. I haven't right. seen this. Those are all like. Uh, it's been it's been a bit, but I remember enjoying it. I don't remember the scene, but I don't think there's much audio, but here we go. There was a guard key. Manager's key. Yeah, guard key. Oh, wrong tools. It's a lot of picks. Oh, look, that's a that's a dimple lock rake. <laughs> so it's probably like a die bold safety security box lock there and uh yeah you're not gonna pick those or get anywhere close but here here's the thing where, that they did get right is that the guard key on every single one of those locks on the right hand side is going to be the same key per bank mm -hmm. so the guard would actually have those and then the customer key on the left hand side is the key that you put in afterwards after the guard key has been inserted to to open up the lock completely yeah but those those uh totally wrong tools they're they're probably going to be like an eight or nine lever uh uh lock on both of those and uh, so you're going to be looking at wires and different things like that oh there's a yeah right there Let i did my research on the easy one yeah, those, those, <laughs> there are no guard keys there the guard keys are going to be the same cut and usually they're they're pretty specific well pretty pretty simple cuts uh like only two cut depths uh, mixed between all of them um, and then it's kind of interesting if you if you're a legit locksmith you know exactly where to drill the face uh, for the the safety deposit lock to be able to cheat to pick the uh, the, the rest of the lock so you don't have to just destroy the lock you, you drill a little hole and there's a cutout on the face of the uh, the, 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 the lock itself and you can actually um, move the lever, put a rod in to hold the lever and go through the entire stack. So you don't even legit have to pick it because uh, those, those locks are super ridiculously hard to pick. You can't just shove a dimple rake in there and turn it? No. 
I don't know. Maybe corn cob. I kid. feel I lied to. I feel lied to. <laughs> That's awesome. Another right. another another tidbit there is that those locks are super freaking cool, and you can buy one off of eBay for a couple dollars. They well, yeah, locks. they like. That's something I haven't even touched. I haven't even seen one. Lever locks? Like, yeah. Played with one in person at all. Well, so most most of the time, lever locks are pretty expensive, but specifically, like, the security box, uh, safe deposit box locks, you, you can buy. Okay, I, they're, they're, I've had way too many my, nights where I won boxes of 20 or 25 <laughs> of these. <laughs> like, I, I literally have way, 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 way too many of these because you can buy them for like $1.50 each. But how many well, have you picked? None. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, what's interesting you is like- You don't understand. I have this problem. <laughs> It's like these are really freaking hard locks to pick. I mean, like I've been looking into creating the tools and different things for them, and uh, um, I have not figured out these. I I can pick a, a simple like Squire lever lock or or whatever you see, but these safety deposit box keys are a, a whole nother level. I haven't quite figured out. I've made more cutaways out of them than uh, picked them. So I was gonna say, I hope you have. A bunch of cutaways because like when they close bank branches i imagine they just like sell those walls full of these wholesale and like you know that's um, that'd be a cool cutaway they they are freaking awesome cutaways and I've, I've made a bunch of them i've given a bunch away and different things like that but they're they're actually one of my favorite locks they're pretty neat and i found a place to like source the guard keys so i can go through it, interesting note when you do buy it off of ebay it's not going to come with a guard key <laughs> Which the guard key, you just buy a blank and figure it out. So it's not too bad. That's awesome. All right, next one, Terminator 2. Oh, Classic. Yeah. This is I might, a good... I might cut it short just because, you know, there's blood at the end of this clip. But anyway, here we go. This was one of the first scenes I ever saw lock picking, honestly. Sarah O'Connor. Classic paperclip. And paperclips are usually pretty thick, like 25, yeah, 30 thousand. Like, the, you, you know well, what I mean? Earlier, she picks her restraints with that same paperclip. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's, so most likely a mental hospital like that is going to have, uh, the, what is it, the small interchangeable format locks or whatever. And that, like, you can kind of see the outline of that. They, they usually have a uh, uh, two keys, the, the, yeah. the key to pull the core and then the, or the control yeah. key and then the control key and key. operation. Yeah, the, the operation key, which honestly makes it a, in a lot of, in a lot of cases a lot more difficult to pick. Um, Best is really known for that. There's a lot of other uh, manufacturers, but picking that with two paper clips is uh, like Picking a, SFICs with anything is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a best I haven't gotten open yet. I got a lot of bests I haven't <laughs> opened yet. <laughs> the, dual, yeah. your line, the dual shear line of SFICs makes them interesting. Yeah, you know what? I, I haven't tried like uh, creating, you know, the tension wrenches where you can tension off the, uh, the shear line. Have you guys seen those? I I've heard of I've them. I that. haven't seen them. Where you can actually tension, um, yeah, the, which shear line you want, pretty much. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's something that we need to go through. I, it, they don't look too bad to machine. Maybe we should like kind of. If you have a CNC, not all of us have those, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, you <can laughs> remember my statement about my garage earlier, Jimmy? <laughs> it's true. There's a solution for that. You'd have two doubles of like your favorite scotch and then you just buy it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, kind of like what you were saying earlier, like mental health facilities, places like that, they usually have pretty high security keys. Now these are keys that I took at Alcatraz last year, um, the actual keys. Um, but years before that, I was actually at a county jail uh, in my hometown doing something. And I was asking like, so what kind of keys do you take? 
you know, do these locks take? And they're like, oh, well, they're kind of like these standard, you know, they were basically saying pin tumbler, but they were like this long, like they're really, really long keys. They're, they're a lot longer than your standard house. Yeah, and they're bigger too. Those look like lever locks though. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I would say they yeah, both the, went warding too, which is kind of abnormal for a... Yeah, these lock. big, these big lever lock ones. Yeah, for sure. But but the one at my uh, at my county jail or whatever, it was like a regular pin tumbler one, but it had like the little cuts in it. So like if you tried to go in there and like whatever, get rough with it or quick, it actually is designed to break off kind of like a kind of like a precursor to a kill lock. But it was like a 12, 14 pin tumbler like key. <laughs> well, and I was like, have you guys have you guys watched Escape from Pretoria? Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, my gosh, man. All right. So a few a few years ago, we had to, we we invited Tim Jenkins. The, it's who this movie is based off of, who escaped from a high maximum security African or a South African prison. Oh, yeah, I have seen so that. Like the seventies, but we we invited him out to lock fest. So I got to chill with this the, with this guy for like a whole weekend. He literally handmade keys and picked. I think it was like 14, 15 different high security picks or uh, excuse me, locks to escape a prison. Uh, then, then they made a movie about it and with uh, what's the Harry Potter guy's name? I don't know. Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe? Yeah, yeah, that dude. But anyway, it's actually a true story. Uh, he, he went through and completely made these keys. Most of them looked like lever locks and different things like that. But one of the craziest stories ever, one of the, the most courageous guys I've ever met in my whole life. He's just this little old dude. And uh, listening to his story is what he actually did. You got to watch the movie and uh, like understand how someone actually went through and did all this. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. But yeah, sorry, prison locks. No, it's Escape crazy. from Pretoria. So, yeah, Escape from Pretoria. It, the movie's actually not that great. The story, the person behind it, is absolutely insanely good. And uh, that that little old guy, he's a little old guy now, is one of the most interesting people like I've ever met and like drink scotch with. Huh. We'll have to check that out. That's awesome. All right. In the Electric Mist. I have not seen this one but it was on the list, I so I grabbed one. Yeah. I've missed it. Blue Gerard had dug up Cherry LeBlanc's arrest record, and it had cost him his life. You're turning up a tiny bit. But this is going to be... It's maxed. I'm not getting the whole story, Damus. <laughs> All right, we got a dead bull up there. Ooh, that was a short hook. We got. <laughs> oh, look at it. Oh, <laughs> I've been doing it wrong this whole time. I know, right? You just gotta stick it in. You and just twist. jiggle a standard hook in there a couple times, and well, that's why I can't open a medico. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're overthinking it. <laughs> so, so like, on a scale of one to awesome, that would be a uh, Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely Hollywood. However, I think it's a Tommy Lee Jones effect there, though. I mean, the lock just, it knew who was in front of it. Yeah, it saw, saw the smolder. Day, so. <laughs> I like that he doesn't even move it in and out to mess with different pins. Yeah, you just, know, it's the <laughs> same length, just kind of turn it a few times, crank it, and. Like, still locked, know. still locked, still locked. Oh, it's open now. <laughs> he set those pins and they just, they just stayed there. They just <laughs> Yeah. So oh. on, on a side note, though, you don't always need a tension wrench. That's what like a lot of the jigglers and different things like that are for. That can work a lot of times, but even like that's going to be like a five pin uh, deadbolt. Your chances of doing that, even with like a jiggler uh, with no tension wrench are, are pretty slim. However, it locks like the TSA locks, a lot of filing cabinet locks and different. Oh, yeah. Like, like super low quality stuff. Yeah. Sure. House. Okay, he rambles quite a bit in this one. He's like doing some stuff at the beginning, and then they talk for a minute, and then another guy's doing it. But we can talk during it. I'm going to turn the volume down. Okay, I think he's using a letter house. opener. House wants his drugs in his desk that they locked out. They're being mean to him. <laughs> and 
house doesn't know how to pick a lock, which house is freaking awesome. So you think he would want to or know how to pick a lock? I feel like that's a skill he would have. Well, here's the thing. He thinks this guy should be able to pick a lock. And I'm not going to say much about that. But this guy ends up knowing how to pick a lock. So yeah. house's file. He Looks tried like the Tommy Lee Jones method, and it just didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it he in. saw it in that movie, and he figured it would work. It's not as cool as Tommy Lee Jones, I guess. I'm thinking it's going to be like a wafer lock, cheap desk drawer type wafer lock. And actually, some of those can get pretty nice where where you have to pick some up and down. But the, the, for the majority of them, you just have to lift the wafers. Just under. stick a duo on it. All right, let's see. This guy knows what he's doing. Let's whether or not so oh. you grab two paper clips out of it's, the thing and then started working it's technically two better. tools he's got two tools but he'd almost have better luck with the one file i don't know he doesn't know what yeah i do. think i would have tensioned with the with the letter opener and picked with a paper clip yeah he looks determined though so there's that <laughs> <laughs> communication it's, great, is key. <laughs> it's, it's the great feedback those paper clips give uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you saw that, that part right before he stood up, it, you can't really hear it even on the, with the volume all the way up, but right there, it just clicks. It doesn't rotate or anything. It just clicks and he's like, got it. Oh, <laughs> so there's no rotation. It's just, oh it. man. It's like the American like, uh, 1100. <laughs> Sometimes it just clicks and you don't know you got it. It doesn't rotate, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you rotate it really hard. It's a spring, that nasty. Uh, spring. So I actually have some insight on this one. So when I first got into lock picking back in like, like 2008, 2009, I was hanging out with my brother. He's a doctor. And I was teaching. I was like, yeah, I just got into this. We have an uncle who's a locksmith who taught me. Anyway, I was telling him like, and I had a few cheap locks or whatever. And I was, and like, I felt fairly confident and I was picking it and I was like, here, here, here's how you do it. And I explained like tension and, you know, use this tool for this and everything. It's like, so you're going to want to fill it. He's like, got it. It's like, what? <laughs> okay, do the next one. I know it's hard. He's like, okay, got it. It's like, why is this coming so easy to you? He's like, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's like the thousands of sutures and surgeries that I have to do with like these little tiny tools. But yeah, you can totally feel the little springiness inside. And I was like, oh, man, I was cool for five seconds. <laughs> I've known so a couple like, of that have been into it. Yeah, it's like doctors, like especially surgeons, like they, I mean, they already have that sensitivity and it so easily translates. So that that's why I was like, bull crap. But anyway, that was my personal experience on that one. So uh, good stuff. So this one's Hamilton too. I don't think it's a sequel to the musical that everyone's wife is obsessed with, but it looked cool anyway. So here we go. I don't think the subtitles get in the way, but. And that was it. I mean. This is really fast. That was fast. So yeah, I couldn't. He had the two lot. He's got two tools. He's, he does. It, he has what looks like a tensioner and a pick. But his stance is completely wrong. Like he's. It's going to be really hard to actually fill out. They, they do make lock picks for that. Tag 5 Industries is actually specific. Like, they, they manufacture picks like or direct towards um, people like this, like police or, or whatever, who want to like nonchal nonchalantly get into a pick. Uh, they're, they're more of the handle type looking picks. Um, yeah, it's these right here, right? On my, on my uh, webcam. Uh -huh. You got the Tag 5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got like this bent handle thing. So you hold it like like this instead of like more like how you'd hold a pencil. Yeah, more like but anyway, yeah, so that, that's what those uh, those bent handle or those curved handles are or, or whatever. I think that would have helped in this uh, specific position right here. I don't know. It's, he seemed to get in pretty quick. I don't I think it seemed to work out for him. 
Imagine it took them all of two seconds. So, <laughs> well, and this is in Europe too. That's a Euro cylinder. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So that's gonna mean the the pins are on the bottom. Then. I was gonna say, yeah, he's doing it wrong. Then that's oh, not a Euro that's cylinder. Not a Euro cylinder. That's not a Euro yeah. cylinder. Okay, it's European film. Sorry, we'll edit this out. We're not gonna edit anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, good times. All right, Gotham. Yeah. Uh -oh. I haven't watched this series. Is it good? I don't know. I have not watched it. A bunch of padlocks. Yeah, on the lockers there. Is he going after a pad? Oh! Ooh, what is that, a Brinks? No. I think it's a, oh. Pretty sure it's a Master 140. Master 140? Yeah, City it's rig. got the little, the little groove yeah, on the I box. Yeah, Maybe like 150 or something. Oh, I think that was it. I mean, he had a, that was a that was a city rake and a tension wrench. So I mean. uh, he's got a city rake, the snowball. I mean, those are legit tools. Did he use a tension wrench? I, I missed yeah, that. he used a city rake and a tension wrench, which would that would work on that most lock. than likely work on that lock. Yeah, I I actually like these little locks. I do. They're well made. They they give good feedback as far as like setting pins. And interestingly enough, um, there's four. There, there's a few different factories that many. Oh, there's a. There it there's, is. Yeah, threw that a, one in. There's a few different factories that manufacture these to different. Uh, they they just give them tolerances, I believe. But anyway, the internals are a slight bit different depending which factory uh, that it comes from. And honestly, you you'll actually get security pins in a few of them. Not very many, but. Every once in a while, you'll actually get a spool pin in those guys. They're not yeah, very I've, deep spools, but yeah, I've seen a few. the The few that I have, they all have at least one spool in it. But I got some that are like a nightmare. Like I could not get them. Then other ones I could just jiggle oh. open. So like normally they're they're a pretty tight. Uh, normally the the they set really clear, really good. Uh, as normally they're pretty good, especially single picking. Uh, you know, most of the time you can like break them open really quick too, but I don't know. They're, they're fun little locks. The reason I know so much about them was I was going to make cutaways from them. So I bought like 10, 15 of them. I started milling them apart and they're all freaking different inside. <laughs> like there's, there's got to be a few factories, maybe four or five factories out there that produce these things. Interesting. Yeah. I'd much rather single pin pick my master 140 than a master number three any day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, single yeah. Pin picking a master number three, completely unneeded and not fun. No, yeah. it's not fun. Well, they, they can be a torturous, like freaking single pin picking them for a, such a crappy lock too. It's kind of funny. I do like the keyway on these for picking because it's nice and wide. I mean, you look how he's got his heavy top of keyway in the bottom, but it's like lots of room to move around. You don't need your fancy eighteen thousands for this. No. no. Heck, you could do it with like a 30. 25 will work great. Yeah. The heavy tension right. is pretty good and it gives you that nice click there for the single sin or single pin picking. Sorry, I, I yeah. had um I had a buddy over at my house not that long ago with his kids. <laughs> and his kids of different ages from like oh probably if they ever watch this video, they'll kill me for getting their ages wrong. But they're younger kids and they they multiple of them were able to pick open a 140 they had fun with it uh we we put 140s on that uh st con lock picking what what do you oh, call that thing the box the black box uh, the black box is basically but, a box with a bunch of windows on it you'd have to pick to open to get the prize in the center and yeah uh, which those 140s they weather really well even with a million people picking them it's, it's pretty good uh, actually pretty yeah nice. i need to I need to replace them all. They've been, I think it's been through three years and most of them are still the same. I replaced a couple, but yeah, I'll just do new ones next year. Yeah, right. cool, cool. What is this? I haven't seen it. I think it's a Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Well, that means I can watch it with my wife. Famous Jewelers, office number 1044. Gotta pick a Hodge Deadbolt. Hodge? I haven't heard of them. Deadbolt, though. Is I like how he's practicing picking a lock as though it's going to be the same as the uh -huh. lock they're going for. 20. 
Well, yeah, it's the same brand, same lock. Same right? brand. It's the same yep. lock. Yeah. Just memorize memorize that. Uh, and I like how one's order. going clockwise, one's going counterclockwise. He's got a tension wrench, though. Yes, go get in there. And he's using the right tools. It looks yeah. like I can't see the end of the finish. Missed, but... Yeah, I missed what he put in there. Yeah, I, this one was interesting. Like, I, so I liked how he was actually practicing it. Like, run down this hallway, then run back, and then try to like pick a lock while breathing heavy and your heart rate's running and everything. But then in real life, it's like, he's not practicing with like the big, thick leather gloves on that he had earlier. I mean, and like, so it's like, for some parts, super realistic. Other parts is like, why didn't you practice with that? Like, I mean, look yeah, at you these gnarly things. If you're really practicing that, you'd, you'd be wearing the same thing. That might be a fun contest sometime, picking with like gloves, with gloves. on some sort of <laughs> But man, yeah. mittens. Right. Adrenaline. Pumping. I was just gonna say with adrenaline pumping, it, it's it's a completely different game there. Dude, it is so hard. Like uh I, I bought Pat Watson's uh oh what was it? Tactical lock picking book. It, it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um but it's like picking on your couch is not what it's like in the field at all. Like you need to practice like as close as it would be in the field to actually be good because like your best is like 10% in a real life situation. It's like, yeah, I could, I could relate to that. Seeing people struggle with like Los Santos and stuff. And like also the vault, the St. Con vault, it's almost hilarious, but then you do it and you're like, man, this sucks. Man, I thought it was good. Nothing will guarantee you. You can't open a lock with a whole bunch of people watching you. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Just turn a camera on. I mean, uh, well, like the 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 uh, contest at DefCon and SaintCon and everything else like that. You 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 vaguely kind of get used to it, but honestly, there's something with the adrenaline, and the contest, and everything else like that, and it, it takes some time to. I, it, I I pick locks comfortably in a vice. I mean, that's <clears throat> that's exactly what it's like in real life, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, every padlock is in a vice and nice and stationary for yeah. you. Oh, and your nice room temperature. It's not freezing outside. Get worry. it at just the right angle. And, yeah, yeah, very comfortable <laughs> angle. Perfect height. You should try it when you can hear your heartbeat in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that All once right. or twice. All right, Castle. I do like this show. I don't know if you watch the show. And Nathan Fillion's in it, so your wives would love it as well. So... <laughs> So she's a cop and he's a writer. I think somebody on my conspiracy websites would have mentioned that. I don't think Violet's home. Yeah. What was that? Did you guys catch it? Some obscure tool of some kind. It's not okay. It was actually. Oh, it was two tools. Okay, a tension wrench and a pick. Yeah, so she had them in like her cargo pocket, and it looked like one of them was bent from like just the outline of her leg or whatever. It's like it came out of a lock picking village. <laughs> yeah, I got one or two of those. Yeah, so that's a twist, twist oh, flex yeah. rake. Yeah, so it's got the nine. Okay. Yeah. Just Forward a note there. Not a fan of the uh, twisted like yeah, the, tension the twisted tensions. Yeah, they they kill like, your feedback. Kind of I think it's that? good for like newer ones just because they twist, they push so hard. And then once they start learning it, get rid of the twist flex. Like, yeah. no, go with the original. My, my wife still uses one of those just because she uses way too much tension when she plays around with my lock picking stuff. Is that a bold one? Yeah. I to think read that's a that bold one. Uh, yeah, you can't really. It almost yeah, looks like bold. a bald one. I wonder does if the door, that was yeah. Wait, does the door just move without her turning it? Yeah, right there. So, actually, bam. Oh, what? <laughs> Cutting those pinches through that latch. Very useful. I don't know. I know it's like that doesn't even have to just, <laughs> just the whole thing inched backwards. So yeah, there you go. I think I've got another castle. Maybe I didn't throw it in because it was kind of dumb, but yeah. So, yeah. Oh, this isn't Castle. Oh, white no, collar. this one isn't Castle. This is White Collar. So, have you guys seen White Collar? I love the series. 
I've, oh, never I've watched it. the whole series like four, probably like four times all the way through. I love it because I love heist shows. I mean, it's oh. really, really good. This is one of my fun ones. Super fun ones. Okay, so this is a Zwiegfeld Millennium. So here we go. Um, I might have to fast forward a little bit, but yeah, it's pretty much there. It's Eagle Millennium. I won't even need my pick, so I'll just bump it. He's just gonna bump it. Ah, but with my modifications, it is unlike any other scale. That guy reminds me of Babic. So you got legit tools. Can you turn it up? Yes. Tension is unreadable. It's unreadable. I don't. Uh, what does that even mean? Does that mean you're not? Does that mean it just spins freely? <laughs> does it mean it spins freely, or you don't feel anything binding? That that's what I figure it means is not getting the binding. Their feedbacks unreadable would be the yeah I would use I wouldn't use the word tension there but yeah oh so he opened it what did he say there I, I I used the hook but it was tough though I mean good job like you had another pin yeah oh I used the hook it was tough though uh, this this doesn't do the the genius is uh yeah, and then here he starts talking. I mean, I had the subs, but... They've got the right words in the wrong context. A bluff inside the cylinder. What? I mean, they have, like, uh, trap pins and different things like that, but... Uh, it's, it's it's awkward. <laughs> they, they, they should have did their homework, like, making it tougher. Yeah. If you, look at the actual, if you look at the actual lock, it looks like almost like one of those Schlage Camelot... Now, oh, get out of the way. One of those Schlage Camelot ones, because it's got all the all the ten keys on it, and then just the standard whatever, and then a a uh, actual keyway in it. But I mean, it's a made up it's the Ville Millennium or whatever. But super fun show. Yeah. Oh, so good. Everyone should see it. It's very good. U.S. Marshals. So this is the uh, sequel to The Fugitive. Still a great show. I have not watched this. <clears throat> oh, this is uh, Wesley Snipes on the run or whatever. Yeah, I watched the... the... What is oh. that? Oh, so that's actually not a lock. That, that's a uh, so bit, bit of a spoiler for a 20-year-old mo movie. That's a single shot pistol that was hidden inside the uh, toilet paper roll so that guy's supposed to kill the, the main character or whatever so he's like hey i gotta pee so while he's like taking a dump or whatever he's actually taking the single shot pistol cylinder pistol out so he can kill the guy on the plane there this is a prison transport plane but the part that is this part oh so that's the part of so someone's eyeglasses of we're picking handcuffs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do not know much about handcuffs. I figure if I ever end up in handcuffs, I probably deserve it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know much, but I don't think that's would have worked. I think he would have had better if he would have just shimmed it with the. I was going to say, they, shimming it may have actually worked. I, they're probably yeah. too thick, but they didn't. Datamus, you know about handcuffs, but that would have worked. What do you do? I mean, because it's like a small lever lock, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a small lever just, lock. He kind of just shoves the eyeglass into it and it pops open. So this happens a few other times in it. Like they said, you know, he escapes the plane or whatever. And then the U.S. Marshals and there's also like a DEA guy or whatever. And he's like, and they don't trust him. I think it's Matthew Broderick or maybe Robert Downey Jr. Anyway, they put handcuffs on him. Like, how do you get out? And he was just looks at the guy and he grabs the guy's sunglasses, snaps the arm off of it. And then he does the exact same thing that Wesley Snipes did. He puts it in, bends it, and then he opens the handcuffs. And it's like, that's how he must have done it. And basically, that's what they're showing here. Like, he must have stolen it because some guy had broken glasses. 
Uh, I've, and, I've never looked into handcuffs before because they're not the most complicated or fun locks, but... Like, I think if he would have bent it into a lever and then, like, turned it, it would have... Yeah. But he kind of just, like, yanks it open. And I don't... And here's the thing with Hollywood. I wonder how much they can actually get away with showing before the censors are like, no, you'll legit teach each <laughs> You can't teach like... people how to pick bad lines. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not this thing called YouTube, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no. And I don't know enough about I I don't know enough about handcuffs, but I think I would have right. just. Ooh, there's a city rake upside down. Upside down rake. <laughs> yeah, the the thumbnail already ruins it, but you know we'll watch it anyway. Uh, what was this one called? The collector. I haven't seen this, but. Oh, with uh, is that um, Denzel Washington and? Yeah, I think. So a half. But I'm thinking of, of the rake. Boat. And <laughs> half ball city rig, up, uh, both upside down. <laughs> instead of top of the keyway tension, maybe that was bottom of the keyway tension on a euro lock. I don't know. Probably oh, no. It's a, it depends no, it's on a doorknob. Yeah, it's a door. Well, K, K, K cylinder pins are going to be on top. Yeah. Um, well, it almost looks like the whole knob is about to fall apart. I was going to say, I like that you can see that the cylinder is <laughs> like, like about it's to like come pulling right out now. right there. <laughs> like one of those old schools. Yeah. They could probably yeah. just knock it off with a kick. Probably. <laughs> but he's being sneaky. I mean, that's my that's my problem with bump keys. Like, if you're trying to sneak in, never use a bump key. Not that I ever sneak in, but it's like you're literally knocking on the door to use a bump, bump key. Bump keys actually take more of a like a fill to get them down than you would think but and and sore fingers learning that fill well and you don't solve the lock you just kind of like defeat it which is yeah. not any fun but anyway yeah it's just worse midnight run so this is from d's channel actually Ooh. see this is a robert de niro right that was a snapper It's legit. Well, That's, nope. What? That is good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What he did there was completely legit. That was good. Well, that's how they did it in like the seventies and eighties. Like a lot of times, they like had their little homemade snappers out of like piano wire. And, well, it was like you can make it out of bike spokes, piano wire, or whatever else. I. I I've made a bunch out of uh, uh, wire snake stuff, and uh, they are way more efficient than you would want them to be. I can get past a slave Everest with it within seconds. Not not the slave Primus Everest, but the slave uh, Everest with this just is the one standard pass. Everest. Yeah, the, but it still has a passive pin, right? Like the one passive pin on the, down on the right hand side. Yeah, uh, I I can snap it within a few seconds and set the pin and open it with a snapper within. Well, within yeah. like... How how would they work on security pins though? Because the Everest is all standard pins. Oh, um, they're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna work as well. But anything where you're like looking at bumping or yeah, yeah, that's like either bumping or. Or rake, well, maybe not so raking, but they are stupid, scary, effective, actually. Huh. I may yeah, have to make one of those. They're super easy to make too. Which, if you if you look around, how many comp or how many uh, companies like depend on Slage Everest or or did what? You can even see he's putting tension on the tensioner there. Yeah, you know, can see kind of a, Yeah, you can see the index. You can see the the white on his index. Yeah, that's. That's legit. Okay, I'll try to pause it right at the right spot. Tension's key on those, just like it is on bump keys. Same, same, same theory as far as like bumping up the uh, driver pins over the shoe. He may be using a bit too tension, but the fact that you can see using a tensioner whilst also trying to pick, I think this is the best we've seen so far. 
when it takes them a second too like uh, yeah it's not instantaneous <laughs> they've got the right tools but they're done in sec in two seconds uh, yeah look at the shape of that snapper man that thing looks like it was like handcrafted too which it's, is kind of interesting it's got a full twist in the handle uh, and the, like, that tension wrench looks like it came from hell and back. I mean, that thing, <laughs> like, it was just like either man crafted, like for emergency, but yeah, that's completely yeah. legit there. Getting all the way to the back of the keyway and working forward. Those are actually super fun, the snaps. <laughs> Unless someone shoots me first. Yeah, I mean. There's the adrenaline there. You have to pick before the shotgun goes off. <laughs> new, new Saint Con challenge. <laughs> We're gonna have to update our waiver. I didn't have that much. <laughs> oh man. Oh Castle. So this is another scene from Castle. This is actually the uh, Nathan Fillion's daughter. I guess the girl and her friend got kidnapped. Turn up tiny bit again. I got old ears. That's... Most likely she turned it the wrong way, but did she, she, she had like tension wrench and whatever down like pretty flat. Yeah, she, yeah. Called it a torsion yeah, wrench. she was explaining that one was being used to tension, one was being used to pick. Yep. And some locks do turn left, clock, counterclockwise and right. She say someone taught her how to do that? Her dad. Oh, that would bring a tear to my eyes of my little girl, <laughs> like, raped in 20, 10, 15 years. Yeah. But the only thing that gets me on that is like the counterclockwise rotation, but honestly that could be just a lot. Some some turn that way. Uh, other than that, yeah. they, they seem like they really freaking had it down. I don't know. Thoughts? Well, well the handles That's not here. terrible. Yeah. Well, the hinges would be here, so maybe that is the right way. The deadbolt goes into this wall. I don't know. It could I mean it, it could go both. It could be either way. I have an embarrassing story about that, but well, I'll tell it some other time. <laughs> say, well, now you got to share it. Stop recording. What? I'm like, buddy had a safe lock. I was like, yeah, I can pick this. Ends up that I was turning it clockwise. Stupid lock required me to turn it counterclockwise. I did not find that out until I was forcing, brute forcing it like manually. I'm like, this sucker won't freaking turn clockwise. The second that I turn it counterclockwise, it just turns, even brute force wise. So, oh, that's rough. Yeah, that's what that's why you have a plug spinner. But all right, this would, one, this is from the Mission Impossible series back in the seventies and eighties. This was actually uh, so I did a Kickstarter a few years ago for my lockpick collar stays, and so I started uh, researching: does this actually exist? And like on the subreddit like there's this one scene in this one mission impossible where, where the guy had a lock pick for his collar stays but it was like whatever it's like i have to find this so this is the scene from that whoa went to there we go so basically he's been kidnapped they take all of his stuff his pockets his belts everything he's in some room Oh, David Mass, are you going to have to like clean Dude, that's up? awesome. Outside yeah, of the fact that the a shirt. Pick. Then he fells. I mean, here's the but, thing like, if he didn't have a circa 1970s ginormous collar that can fit a six inch tool, <laughs> he never would have worked out. I mean, you could have it going around. It doesn't have to be just all in the huge. What, lapel? Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. I get nervous, like with a sharpened little metal thing, like literally this close to my neck. <laughs> what if you turn real fast and like, ah, 
This is one of the things I had to think of. I don't know. If you had like a a, a 15,000 spick, I think it would just bend around in your collar, no problem. Especially if you had a tie on. You just bend it back to normal or straight or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I know like Sparrows makes those uh, cuff length um, Mm -hmm. handcuff keys. Uh, what kind of lock is he looking at there, though? Like a really to... easy to pick one because he just sticks the pick in and turns. Yeah, because the Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Crappy door don't make anymore brand. A Hollywood special. Yeah, and it's kind of fuzzy, oh. but just the twist back and forth. Method. Yeah, he does that too. Single tool. 1966. Uh, <laughs> Points for having in the collar stay area. Oh, oh, uh, oh! How did how did that get in there? Oh man, that's that's just weird. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was I had to make sure I didn't like steal the whole idea, as like or whatever. But technically, we mine were. Yeah, I, well, I also wrote them for dual purpose. Like the way I wrote my patent was to manipulate locks and stiffen collars. You should make some jiggler ones though too for like wafer locks and different things like that. Well, I do have a new project I'm working on, but it's it's stalled out for a bit. I need people to test it out. My locker dials or whatever. Only if you need people to test it out. Yeah, if only, if only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll reach out. All right, Mr. Robot. So this one's pretty quick because I know they had to keep up the pacing to make the episode more suspenseful or whatever but this one's gonna be quick i mean picking fast isn't you can pick things fast it's not fun though usually you have to rake it to get open fast you're not gonna single pin picking something fast Wait. maybe not that fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think they were trying to keep the timing up and everything but what's interesting even... I can't even tell he's, what tools he's using. Is it one of those credit card kits, it looks like? It is. It's one yeah. of the credit cards. So, like, <laughs> he doesn't even have, like, a full handle. It's, like, all with the fingertips. None of, like, the relying on the palm. Or, like, James Bond. Area. Which, well, <laughs> honestly, some of the, the, the credit card kits out there, like, plug to tool, the, the, the cr- credit card style kit for tool is actually pretty badass. Christina... Christina Palmer designed the rakes and the hooks and everything on that thing. She did a really good job on it. But this, I don't know exactly what he's... I can't yeah, really I can't tell what tell. he's doing. It's a little too quick to really see what he's actually doing. It almost looks like he just has a pick jammed into the lock and he turns it on his fingers. Maybe yeah. it's like a rotor pick for pin tumblers that's too advanced for us. I don't know, Mr. Robot style. I don't know. Maybe. Also, I do like that it's the stairs like and it has the in case of fire use stairs and it's locked oh. i'm pretty sure someone with fire code would have yep. feelings about that let's see yeah so, so he's in i know in this scene he's in some super high security data center yeah where the only people that should be on that floor are the people with the keys but i didn't finish after like season one and a half or something like that okay we're back oh, to my oh. color Collar, white collar. White collar. So this is two clips of the same scene, but I cut out a bunch of stuff so it was quicker. But anyway. Oh, it's like they need to go in there and get stuff. But I think the uh, arms dealer who hit or whoever he anyway, him and his FBI handler are kind of not happy right now or whatever. So he's like, don't do anything stupid. Don't try to whatever. <laughs> wait, 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 go back, go back. Let's judge his tools. <laughs> I just like the leather case. Yeah, it was a nice leather case. I really like nice case. <laughs> the Italian? That is nice. But what, what that, the hell is he key? doing with two ball picks? Two balls. Is that a third ball behind the one on the... No. What is that on the far right in the back? No, that maybe, looks like maybe it's a DeForest hat. Yeah, he's got a key does look key like extractor it. as well. Why key would he extractor. want a key extractor? extractor. Oh, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's a great picture. <laughs> it is a DeForest half. Yep, See, DeForest. he's pretty awesome. <laughs> nice no one that. Just for you. All right, so he takes his picks away. Come on, Peter, you cannot lock me in here. 
locks him in some cabinet, which has the lock on the inside, which, whatever, I get it. It's for the scene. In no circumstances is he to leave. He has no medical condition. He's had enough water. He's been to the bathroom. If he calls you, don't answer. If he requests anything, don't acquiesce. I don't understand why he had two ball picks. That doesn't make sense. But ball picks are underrated for wafer locks. I like ball picks for wafer locks. Mainly because you can pick up and down. And then the next scene. So in this one, it was, uh, let's see, he actually did have to get in it. So he like made it. So like, hey, I take your picks away. So I know you can't get away with it. And then he like has to sneak out and do the thing. Does he have his computer hooked into the breaker box? That's the best way to hook in a computer. <laughs> Straight yeah. mains power to your... <laughs> Nothing screams band with like 220. <laughs> <laughs> Operation is in play. Whoa, wait, wait, go back, go back, go back. What did he, what was he using there? And where did he get them from? They were in his hat band. They were out in his hat band? Okay. But he had, a, looks like a hook and a small half diamond, I think. It's like a curved half diamond. I don't even know what those are. They're no, because no they were in his hat. They curved. And oh, all right. So has anyone ever used a hook as a tensioner and then picked with another one? Meddler? No. Nope. Uh, have I? It seems like a new challenge. Oh. Here we go. It's like, <laughs> pick this lock with two hooks or something like that. I had one. So I used to carry, you know, the uh, Southward has those two two-sided ones that are like super skinny. Like one's like a half diamond, one's a hook, another one's like a, like a double peak. Anyway, I used to carry those inside my cell phone case before I carried a jackknife or whatever. And like, it was inside my cell phone case from like here to here. And so there were some times where I would use the hook as the tensioner, and then I would use the other thing. And then I just got wise and carried a jackknife with me and other stuff. So. Uh, I mean, anyway. it might be kind of fun contest, like pick lock. That's like a good way to break a pick. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you <laughs> say like contest, a really good way like, to break a pick. We already have plenty of those use cases. Too, you have like, to use 15 thousandths for both. 15 thousandths <laughs> tensioner. It's like, Standard hook. That's my challenge. Tension with the 15 hook yeah it's not gonna work but anyway 1100 with it you guys are evil okay so this next one how many of you have seen tenant i have not been i have not okay so probably stupid virus yeah i braved corona twice just so i could see this in theaters twice so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil it or tell anything but basically if you've seen the trailer there's they're at an airport and there's a secure facility at this airport that they need to get into. And it's not in the trailer or anything like that, but basically they have to pick locks in a high stress, way cool scene. And they have to get through like three or something doors in a certain amount of time. It was intense, it was very good. And then at the last door, something unexpected happens. And it is like, that's actually pretty freaking realistic. But I couldn't find the thing. I didn't want to break in. I didn't want to like go to the theater and record it with my phone just to get it or anything like that. And, <laughs> and I don't think that. Where's the dedication? I'm uh, missing the dedication, Davis. I mean, like yeah. really. I don't know. It did cross my mind. I did have my spy pen all ready to go. It was like, no, no. This this single film is keeping the film industry alive right now. So I should support it, and I'm probably going to go see it again because it's that good of a movie. But anyway. <laughs> Go see Tenant. There's a couple lock picking scenes, but the one at the airport, they, they call it the Freeport, is way cool. Huh. So there you go. You're not show us. Uh, no, I, ne I never got the video of it. I'm just saying you should go see it. It's that good. I could tell you what happens, but that would totally, you would be mad at me. We would not be friends if I told you what happened. So, man, look at that hook. And then the very last one, this is from my all time favorite hacker movie. Um, but yeah, and I included the parts where it's uh, got social social engineering as well. So 
Here we go. Open, yeah, open. Hold on okay. a second. I got this. Did my yeah, wife drop a right. cake off for me? I will cake. There's no cake. Surprise there. party from ours on the second floor. She was supposed yeah. to drop a cake off. I dropped. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Uh, there she is, ladies. Okay, usually. well, it states right here very clearly that I am to deliver 36 boxes of liquid drainage Look, to this here address. I don't care what that if says. You you're not on the list. That, you can't get in. I do have a problem with it. You can't get in. I might lose my job. Well, it's not my problem. Kid, I'll beat it, all right? I can't reach my car. Could you buzz this one? I can't reach my car. Wait, one minute. The buzzer okay? We're late for the party in the second floor, aren't we? Push the goddamn buzzer, will you? Thanks. Well, <laughs> I love uh, that. Such a good movie. <laughs> I love but the movie. It, hey, first, have any of you not seen Sneakers? I have not. So I was oh, going to okay. say, I'm going to get judged, but I haven't seen it. Okay. This you is now my favorite lockpick scene of all time. You are both judged. Maybe this is like describes your life choices. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody remember how to defeat an electronic keypad? <laughs> Don't even joke about that, Martin. Those things are impossible. Think I'm joking? Looks like they just put it in. Oh, boy. Here, maybe this might help. An old buddy of mine who was in Desert Storm sent it to me. Whoa, Dan Aykroyd. on the other side. Nice. I mean, Come on, Chris. Is he There's doing anything anymore? Things. All right, all right. I can't recall anything. This is good. This I remember this part. Yeah. <laughs> I, is it just about? Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was expecting I... him to just put in four zeros and have it open. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how criminals get through doors. Yeah, uh, not with lock picks. I love that part. Just, just okay. the build up and everything's like, uh huh, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. Okay, here goes. He just like kicks it, and <laughs> that's my all-time favorite. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Sneakers, you're a horrible person. But you should see Sneakers. It's really freaking good. It got in my whole career. It's like one of those like inspirational movies or or whatever. It, it like defined like it was like. It was in 92 and it was, yeah, 1992. And they're like the first physical security uh, pen tester firm or whatever. Like, so there's a podcast by Duo Security. It's called Deciphering um, Sneakers. And they break this down and talk about it behind the scenes and everything. And they're like security folk talking about security hacking movies. The whole series is funny, but the sneakers one is really, really good. And they're like, yeah, it's it's got social engineering. It's got lock picking. It's got all this interesting stuff in it and they actually like had to throw in a few f words afterwards because it was pg and they're like everyone's going to think this is a kid's movie but it's like a suspenseful spy sort of thriller movie so like they had to throw in a few things in post-production but it's a really good movie like y'all should see it he may be overselling a little bit i mean like story shut up no i'm not no i'm not <laughs> shut shut up <laughs> It defined my life, but like storyline, you're, you're you're talking to like like people are, that aren't in the security realm of things, like. Uh, but uh, maybe they'll end up with us after watching sneakers. I don't know. Hey, lock picking was my gateway drug into infosec. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I felt like I was walking down the street and fell in a puddle. But that was my. Uh, Oh, good times. So that's all I had. We've probably gone a little over an hour, but yeah, that was that was fun. That was I enjoyed fun. that. Yeah, thanks for putting this together. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. You may have to edit that down. An awesome job with like all the slides and the videos and everything. That's a ton of work, Dave. Must call in. Yeah, I had to watch so much YouTube. It was hard. It was so hard <laughs> watching YouTube. Oh my so, yeah. Anyway, we'll uh. We'll get this posted on St. Con. I don't know. It's not on the schedule yet, but we'll just send the recording and they'll just throw it up sometime. And uh, yeah, 